Welcome friends. If you've been following my videos, you already know that there's a new patch out 0147.3 for Valheim. And this one makes a number of changes to how dedicated servers actually work and how you connect to them. So this time I'm going to take a look at dedicated servers, either private or community servers, how you connect to them, how you make them visible or invisible, how you play on them, whether you're using SDR, meaning the Steam Datagram Relay or a direct TCP IP, and what this is all about. If you're running a server, this is something that really actually matters. Now, if you enjoy my videos, why not hit that like button and maybe subscribe to my channel as well. I do have a playlist at the top of the description, which leads to a bunch of my Valheim guides. Some gameplay, some server related. But let's take a very quick look at the patch notes here. As you can see, they talk about changes to the dedicated servers. They say dedicated servers now always use direct connections instead of Steam Data Grand Relay, which should result in lower latency. Private dedicated servers are enabled by adding the public zero on the server command line. This has also been added to the server manual PDF that is enabled in the download. I believe this flag was sort of there before, but they weren't really clearly articulating what it was for and what it was doing. But now they mentioned that you can only connect to private dedicated servers using the join IP button. So what does this really mean? And what's a community server versus a private server? Aren't they all dedicated servers? And yes. So from a higher level, there are two ways to play with your friends. One is that someone runs the game client and the server is sort of in there already because they started from within the client. Then there's a dedicated server, which is a separate software that is running beyond just the client. So what we're talking about is the dedicated server. Now within the dedicated server, there are actually two threads. One is a set it public, which makes it a community server. The second is a set it private, which makes it a private server. If you set it as a public server, meaning you have that public one flag, it becomes a community server and it will be using SDR or connectivity, which might have slightly higher latency. If on the other hand, you set it to public zero, it will be using direct IP and not SDR, which should help with some of this connectivity issue. This means in effect that the way players connect to your server depends whether you have public one or public zero. Public one is the default now. But let's dive into some of the specifics. That's a little bit vague and you might be a little bit confused about what it's all about. So I have here my install of my game server. It's a dedicated server. I've used this one through the Steam Tools client on the Steam software itself. You can do the same thing if you're downloading through Steam command. But we're talking about the start headless server dot bat. Opening that up has the information that you actually need. If you look at, this is my name. This is the usual port. This is the world that I will be using. And I have my password to the right and I have it set to public zero, which means that it should be a private server. It's not gonna be a community server. So I'm gonna go into the game and show you what happens when I try to search for it within the server browser. As you can see, the server is running here. So I have here the game client. I'm going to go start game. I'm going to use my test here. Start. I'm not going to start this one. I'm going to do a join game. I'm going to let, and I'm going to do community because it's not a friend server. Definitely, it is a dedicated server. It's not one that our friends are having. I'm going to do a filter on bed because I named it vet test. I'm going to let the server browser just go all through all those. I think it's something like 10, 12,000 servers that are actually out there right now. I just finished searching and there's a few ones that are actually called VED, like evolved. So let's refine it to VED test and you'll see zero out of this 9,471. So it was set at public zero, so it should not show up as a community server. And you might think, hey, you know, my server never shows up anyway, so it shouldn't really matter. But let's do this. I'm going to shut down the client here, just close that for the moment. And then I'm going to shut down the server as well, control C, and I'm going to let things just shut down. And then I'm going to go and edit the file itself. So we are going to flip that over to say public equals one to save that file. And then I'll, we'll be starting up the server once more in order to make it a community server. I've started up again. You see game servers connected, so it's running. Let me start the game client again. Back in the game, start game. I'm gonna go look for server. Don't start it, obviously. You're gonna do join game, community server. Gonna do vet test, which is what it is. And we're gonna let it go through. Let's see where it actually finds it. And there we are. Within the first thousand servers, it found it vet test community server as you can see and yes the correct patch version actually they should have mentioned that that is the version it is uh, password protected and no players online obviously and you saw this change is only because i set it to public one 
So we can definitely confirm that this works. You can actually flip it on and off being a community server versus a private server simply by adding and removing that flag. Now, how about the join IP? Now, join IP you can actually use regardless of whether it's a community server or private server. It's just that if it's a private server, you have to use the IP in port. In this case, I'm going to use my 192.168.1.107, which is the, my LAN IP, and 2467, I believe, is the port. It's not. 2456 is the port, and I'm going to connect to it. And I'm just doing this locally on the LAN. So if you're doing a LAN connection, you can do that. If I added my router IP, that would work as well. I've tried that, actually, and that's just fine. It just means it goes out to the router and then comes back. Because, obviously, I set up my port for and just make sure things are working. And now it's asking me for my password, which was secret bed, I think it was. Let's see if I remember that correctly. And it should be spawning me into the game. And no, it didn't. Oh, secret bed 42. Never mind. Let's do that again. Secret bed 42. Sorry that I'd show you all my passwords. Of course, I don't use this for anything else. And I should be slowly loading into the game. Even though Valheim is not responding, I'm assuming it's connecting and now it's loading in slowly. And here I have, I have arrived. So this works just fine. So this is how you're using a dedicated server. Now, just a little bit of extra. What if you're using a hosted dedicated server? Well, the same things actually work. If it's public one, it means it should show up in the server browser. If it's public zero, it will not show up, but you can still do a direct IP connect. And Probably, if you have just a few friends that you're playing with, you might want to flip this over to zero even on your hosted uh, server, simply because it forces the connectivity to be through TCP IP, which could help with latency overall. And if you get the urge to try to search for my server vet test, well, after this video, it's not going to be here. Actually, probably before the video has been out, I will obviously have shut it down because I'm just doing it to test. So sorry, I don't run it all the time. A lot of people have been reaching out to me mentioning they're having a lot of problems with the latest patch. I am probably one of the fortunate ones which haven't had any issues, but I do recognize that a lot of people are having problems with safes not working, not being able to connect, being disconnected, the world being empty and so forth. And it's one of those things that they seem to be having some issues with it. It's very inconsistent, a lot of people having no problems, a number of people, people having a lot of issues. And what I would urge you to do is make sure you take frequent backups because you don't want to have a, an update actually ruin your, your save because you updated, you started again and something got wiped. So before you do any update, whether you're using Steam command or the client or, or if you're on a Pink Perfect or other hosted provider, take a backup. If you wonder how to do a backup, well, check the, dis the description for my playlist. I do have a video in there how to actually make backups. But this is how you deal with dedicated servers and their visibility as a community server or a private server where they're not visible at all. Good luck and enjoy your server Viking. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.